We'll now look at what's called local and global extrema. And extrema is just a fancy word to say maximum and minimum. But there are gonna be two types of maximums and two types of minimums. The first we'll look at is global extrema. And global extrema is also known as absolute extrema. A global max or a global min can also be called absolute max or absolute min. A global maximum occurs if f of x zero is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain. It is the absolute highest point of your function. And you'll notice that is a greater than or equal to. If you have, it is possible to have two global maximums that occur at the same point. We also have a global minimum. This is when f of x zero is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain. So this is the absolute lowest point in your graph. It is, low, it is less than every other point in your graph. Just like we have lo local ex or global extrema, we also have something called local extrema. Local extrema are also known as relative extrema. So you can also see this is relative maximum and relative minimum. We say it's a local maximum if f of x zero is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in a small interval around x zero. So it doesn't have to be everywhere in the graph, but just right around this point, it is the maximum. Similarly, we can have a local minimum if f of x zero is less than or equal to f of x for all our values of x in a small interval around x zero. So these are no longer the absolute maximum or the absolute minimum of the graph, but they are a maximum or minimum in a small area of the graph. So now that we've defined these, let's look at a couple of examples to make this a little bit more evident on exactly what we mean. Here I have the graph of a function. And we can see that this point right here is going to be a global minimum because it is the smallest point on this graph. However, this point right here is our local minimum because if I just restrict myself to a small portion of the graph, it is a minimum. This point is a local maximum because once again, if I restrict myself to a small portion of the graph, it is the maximum. This one actually does not have a global maximum because you can see that they're just gonna increase forever. So there's never an actual max point. So this is the idea between maximums and minimums. While having a graph makes finding maximum and minimums easy, it is helpful to use Fermat's theorem whenever we have a function of an equation, of a graph rather than an actual graph. We just have the general equation. Fermat's theorem tells us that if f, our function, has a local extremum at some point x zero, then that point is either a critical point or an endpoint. So remember a critical point is where our first derivative either is zero or doesn't exist. And then the endpoint refers to if we want to restrict our domain. And this does tell us if it has a local extremum, a local maximum or minimum. However, we do know that if you are a local, if you are a global maximum or minimum, then you are also a local maximum or minimum. So this can tell us both. Let's do a couple of examples. Here I have f of x is 3x squared plus 4x minus 7. If I take the derivative, I get 6x plus 4. And to find my critical points, I want to know when this thing is equal to 0. Well, solving this gives me that x is negative 2 thirds. So now I need to know, is this a maximum or a minimum at all? Well, here's negative 2 thirds on the number line. Numbers bigger than this value Well, sorry, negative two-thirds. Let's see what happens. Well, f of a number like zero is gonna be negative seven. So I'm just gonna write a negative seven on this side. If I consider numbers on this side, well, negative one is on that side, so what is f of negative one? 
Well, 3 minus 4 minus 7 would be negative 8. What about actually at negative 2 thirds? What is f of negative 2 thirds? Well, f of negative 2 thirds is negative 8 and 1 third. So you can see that this is actually smaller than the rest of these values. So this is a minimum. Let's look at one more example f of x equal to x cubed. If I take the derivative, I get 3x squared. And if I want to know when this is equal to 0, well, that happens at x equal to 0. Well, numbers bigger than this, like 1, would give me a result of 1. And negative 1 gives me a result of negative 1. And 0 gives me a result of 0. So this is actually neither. And we can also see that from the graph. So not all critical points are going to tell us whether something is a maximum or a minimum, but it can give us an idea of where to start looking.